eyebrows held high, my respected web show. I opine for couple box. Brows held high, everybody loves it. All my colleagues say It sucks! It sucks! It sucks! It sucks! It sucks! Figures. In 1946, the Reich had fallen, and France no longer said Sieg Heil. And from this new status quo came a man named Jean Cocteau, and he made a fairy tale. Good morning, Kyle. Good morning, Monsieur. Where are you off to? Reviewing a movie. I found the most wonderful story about the nature of love and the creative process, and an allusion to Orpheus. That's nice. Vega, more Cybermats. Hurry up. A merry cozy thing, she's smart or something. A most pretentious cinephile. With a condescending gaze. And an allergy to praise. What a prize, how high for Newton, Fred, that Kyle. It sucks. It blows. Hey, Ray, talk shop. It's bad. It's worse. It's Uva Ball. It's dumb. It's weird. It's got Ben Affleck. It delves into a tortured artist's soul. What? what? How is this art have soul? I can torture Sam Key. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Ben. You caught me in an old Max musical episode. Ooh, can I sing? Well, I'd have to write your whole bit and do a arm um, session. Kyle, I have been working with you for years. I am just as good a singer as you are, if not better. I need to sing. Yes. Really? Ben, I can't let you not sing. I refuse to do a musical episode including a subplot where someone tries to sing but can't. It is literally the only character trait that Doug has ever written for me. I refuse to do it! When do we start? Later, I'm doing a bit. Okay! He only touches films we've never heard of. And you believe he has such guys? Why should we click on the link? If we don't know what to think, no, no we just, just don't, don't understand, understand the ways of Kyle. Oh, it needs no announcing just how many hearts this tale has moved. Even if they fail pronouncing the name Gabrielle Suzanne Barbeau de Villeneuve. Is your real principal mod dipshit? It just did the abridged version. Still wrong. I will fight you on this. Hello, I'm Paul, and now it's time for Best Worst. The best is obviously me. And the worst is yonder snob, who just likely miserable. Do I really have to spell it out? I think you have to spell it out. All right, right let's spell, spell it out, K-Y-L-E. And that's why I think Walt Disney should have been played by Samuel L. Jackson. Until next time, I'm some jerk with a camera. Go! an awesome shot, jerk! Well, you gotta be the greatest white male, Jewish, overweight, long-haired, bespectacled theme park reviewer over 30 the world's ever known! <laughs> I know. No right alive can withstand your review, or no reviewer for that matter. It's true, Mask Slasher, and I'm pointing my camera at that one. The brown-tailed high guy? He's the one. The lucky reviewer I introduced to the magic of mass entertainment. Nobody! Oh, the most pretentious reviewer online! I know, but... That makes him the worst. And don't I not fail to never not deserve the worst? In 1991, the mouse was thriving with Eisner, Katzenberg, and Wells. When the studio unveiled a newfangled fairy tale with a storyline that rang a couple bells. Hey, look, some jerk, he's got a camera. Who's he? Don't know. I thought you knew. It's crap. It's shit. It's worse than cat. It's overrated. It's bad. It's drag. It's wet. I feel unclean. So let's review it. It's it hurts. It's I hate it. Has no it's not bad. It's not bad. It's time this masterpiece of silver screen. I'll make that guy review a film we've seen.
Shut up, Ian. For my show's next cinematic feast, I'm doing Beauty and the Beast. Well, you better do it right at least. He's hot. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. I've been whisked away to a Disney theme park. I am as the boy who met the world. Magic of a jump cut, my friend. Welcome to the happiest place on Harbor Boulevard. I feel like a targeted demographic. That'll go away. Why is my tie covered in Mickey's? Oh, that's a side effect from the teleportation. It'll probably go back and forth randomly throughout this video. Come on, cheer up! We're at Disneyland! But... Why? Well, I figured if you're gonna do Disney, why not go to the source? Disney? You're reviewing Beauty and the Beast, yes? La Belle at La Bette, we. Oui. Okay, my German's a little rusty, but I'm flattered and I don't swing that way. Well, you're not listening during the song? Jean Cocteau's La Belle et La Bette. Released in 1946, right after France's liberation from German occupation, and often seen as a Kickstarter for post-war French cinema, this adaptation of Villeneuve's fairy tale of the same name was the child of the celebrated French poet, playwright, graphic artist, and jack of all artistic trades, Jean Cocteau. A surrealist romp through metaphor and allegory with lush imagery by cinematographer Henri Alacan, this film... Wake up! Ariel swallowed Tinkerbell! Ah, oh, crap, I didn't study for this test. I hate these dreams! No, no, this is the movie. Though you're not wrong. This is a surrealist film. And surrealism is the art form that studies dreams. I have to watch an art film and read? It's not right for reviewers to read. Soon we start getting ideas and thinking. It's just a quick preamble, no big deal. Okay, okay, let's turn on subtitles. Children believe what we tell them, they have complete faith in us. Uh, yeah, they believe that a rose plucked from a garden, French, 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 plunge the family into conflict, whatever, cursive, cursive, cursive. I believe they're in the hands of a human beast. Uh, cursive, cursive, French, French, smoke when you slay the victim. I've never heard that even as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need to cause the beast shame. Uh, young maiden takes the residence in his home. I don't know why that would ever be shameful. They believe a thousand other things. So it's, 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 you know, I ask of you a little of this childlike simplicity. Hang on a second. This film wants us not to think about it? You're sure this is an art movie? Not, not think about it, but think like a child. How am I supposed to think like a child? The film opens with this lovely bucolic scene of... Um... Animal cruelty. Well, it's an art movie. Shocked it took him this long. As we're introduced to the family of La Belle... Wait, you mean the sombrero Queen Elizabeth's here? Well, one, they're wearing 17th century dress to evoke an early modern setting, specifically the paintings of Johannes Vermeer. And two, those are Belle's evil stepsisters. Wow, evil stepsisters. Can't get that in a Disney film. They were in the original story, and probably cut from the Disney version for, well, reminding people too much of Cinderella. They serve the same story purpose here, as examples of bad behavior to make the protagonist look better by comparison. Yeah, it's hard to look likable when you travel by manservant. Yeah, if these women were alive today, they'd be hiring disabled people to help them cut in line for star tours. Sure, we could get a fast pass, but those are for poor people! What's a fast pass? <sighs> you got a lot to learn around these parts. Anyway, the film follows the original story quite closely. It's about a middle-class family consisting of Belle, her father, her brother, and two sisters. Belle's father, a down-on-his-luck merchant, leaves home to collect a shipment. Before leaving home, he asks his daughters what they want when he returns. Did she just say she wants a monkey? Je voudrais un singe. She just said she wants a monkey. This movie is a masterpiece! Et toi, Belle, qu'est-ce que je te rapporte? Mon père, rapportez-moi une rose, car il ne vient pas ici. <laughs> Sorry, we 
just watched a Jeff Dunham special. That guy's hilarious. Stop <laughs> riffing. That's the crux of the entire story. The selfish sisters only want riches, while the humble sister only seeks beauty. It's a morality play as well as a love story. Okay, so while the this 90s the blamed everything on selfish male machismo, the 40s blamed everything on selfish female cattiness? That's a bit reductive. The Criterion Collection proudly and yet humbly presents Women Be Shopping. Now hold on. And while we're at it, how am I supposed to buy that asking for a rose is less reasonable than asking for a monkey? Child logic? Child logic. Okay, let's skip ahead a little bit because I want to get to the cool stuff. The scenes at Belle's house are all Vermeer realism, but once Belle's father gets to the Beast Castle, it goes all Gustave Doré on us. I swear you're just making up names. Doré was the guy who illustrated the book. God, look at that design. Yeah, it looks absolutely nothing like the Disney version of the castle at all. That's because I haven't shown you the interiors yet. Eh? Huh? Isn't that beautiful? It might be if I hadn't already ridden the Haunted Mansion 90 billion times. The what what? The Haunted Mansion! Those arm candelabras are from the Haunted Mansion, the living statue busts are from the Haunted Mansion, this couldn't be more like the Haunted Mansion if Paul Freeze himself challenged us to find a way out! Lord knows I'm trying. Um, wouldn't it make more sense that the Haunted Mansion was trying to be like Cocteau's film? I mean, this isn't an unpopular movie. Or an uninfluential one. Lots of mid-20th century gothic fiction borrowed from it. In fact, let's skip ahead here and look at Belle's first entrance into the castle. And upon entering, it becomes this gorgeously surreal piece of psychomagical etherealism. Building on a personal mythology guided by classical iconography, mirrors to other worlds, magical gloves, living Pygmalion-like statues, Cocteau's near-Freudian sequence of tunnels and hallways makes it clear that Belle's exploring her own subconscious desires as much as she's exploring the home of her new suitor. Does any of what you just said mean she's having a total eclipse of the heart? Because that's what it looks like. It looks like there's nothing she can do, a total eclipse of the heart. Again. Maybe Total Eclipse of the Heart was trying to be like this movie. Alright, enough scenery. I want to see the big guns. Show me the beast! Alright then. Belle's father enters the castle and, remembering his promise to Belle, spies a rose. And when he plucks it... Alors, cher monsieur. Vous volez mes roses. Stop baby talking the beats. Look at that face. Look at those eyes. He looks melancholy but defiant. He looks regal but fierce. He looks He looks like Hermione drank the wrong polyjuice potion. Fine. Okay. He looks like a big cat. We get it. We get the joke. Can we drop this? <sighs> Under protest. Il n'y a ici de maître que vous. Everything in this castle is yours. You want cheeseburger, you can has cheeseburger. Will you please stay on topic? This is on topic. The Disney Beast was way more effectively terrifying. He wasn't just inhuman, he was in every animal. That came out wrong. He was a unique hybrid. Part lion, part wolf, part bear, part boar, part buffalo, and part gorilla. With the horns of a bison, the eyes of a human, and the ears of a cow. This guy is just a big ugly zombie cat. I wonder what his musical would have looked like. But the beast shouldn't simply be terrifying. He's frightening at first, yes, but the beast's main quality should be his ugliness and his kindness. I actually love the simplicity of the Beast's design here. Jean Marais, as the Beast, is quite a layered character. Cocteau once said of Marais that he deserted the human race for the animal race, but still, it's the Beast's humanity that comes through the most. Yes, the makeup is ugly, but soulful as well. It emphasizes his grand, liquid eyes full of so much pain. Disney's Beast always seemed too comfortable with his beastliness. Cocteau's beast is regal, dressed to the nines and constantly trying to suppress his animal nature in favor of his better angels. His moral beauty is in a self-awareness that other beast took so long to show. Non, la 
bête. Cela me plaît. There's a rather famous story, actually. Greta Garbo saw this film in its 1946 premiere, and at the end, when the beast transforms into a handsome prince, she famously cried out, Oh, give me back my beautiful beast! That alone is a testament to how well this beast is designed. And I'm sorry makeup techniques in 1946 weren't cartoony enough for your liking, but frankly... Uh, <laughs> give me that! I'm trying to teach you about a great piece of artwork, and you're just nitpicking and making cat jokes. Y you do know which internet we're on, right? How dare you belittle this masterpiece of- The most pretentious pile of crap I've ever seen in my life. Who does the snail eater think he is, anyway? You betcha man, and you don't even know who he is. You're tanning with the wrong man. Sorry? Nobody even knows Cocteau. The poet, the artist, the lie who tells the truth. Why, it's something I can't bear. Can of beer? Nah, Disneyland's drowned. I don't quite trust the talking cars at California Adventure. Besides, I can't let this rest. You are in bad need of an education. No one remembers the name Jean Cocteau, buried by cells and by ink. They weren't using- I'm here to praise and reclaim Jean Cocteau and his fable for those who can think. A poet, a painter, a playwright, and more, it breaks my artistic morale. At line dancing cutlery, they shout encore, but they overlook Lohi Journal. No one plots like Cocteau, frames his shots like Cocteau, makes his passions your everyday thoughts like Cocteau, for he makes lucid, elegant tableaus. Mythic and wondrous to see. Why just ask Edith, Igor, or Pablo, and they'll point out the man who's the toast of Paris. No one plays like Cocteau, spins a phrase like Cocteau, fills your gaze with amazing ballets like Cocteau. And for that he gets critics ejaculating. Don't judge my kinks or Cocteau. He's dull and weird, he's overwrought! But look at this petrified fountain of thought! Huh? Kyle, it's water. How high are your brows? No one styles like Cocteau, none beguile like Cocteau, makes us view through the eyes of a child like Cocteau, his response to the bourgeoisie's hi-hat was to spell out his fairy tale tone. Can't believe Michael Bay hasn't tried that. You know, kids think this movie makes sense. No, we don't. No one bores like Cocteau, causes snores like Cocteau, depicts women as gold digging whores like Cocteau. His effects are so old they need carbon dating. Point to this snob Jean Cocteau. When he was a youth with the Russian ballet, he had barely inscribed a few lines. But in his old age, the Academy Francais consecrated his Orphic design. Hey, you can't say Orphic here. No. You watch your fucking mouth. We're in fucking Disneyland, motherfucker. No, no, no. Orphic as in Orpheus. It's one of the myths that he returned to over and over throughout his career. The artist who goes to the underworld, becomes changed, and returns. It's the guiding narrative of Cocteau's body of work. Surrealism as a movement is about realizing the subconscious, and for Cocteau, Orpheus symbolized realization. The artist delves into the soul and brings his findings back to the world. Cocteau was always enamored of classical mythology, but Orpheus stuck with him the most. Look at his first film. Blood of a Poet opened with an artist going through a mirror to the underworld and coming back inspired. Later, after Beauty and the Beast, he would make a film about Orpheus, also starring Jean Marais. And his final film, the one that is clearly undisguised autobiography, was called The Testament of Orpheus. And you can see it here as well. The Beast Castle is an underworld, a dreamland ruled by dream laws, and Belle is Orpheus, delving into the underworld to find her beloved. In fact, that's kind of how we see the movies, no? When watching a film, Aren't we all Orpheus? We sit down, the lights dim, and are transported to another world by the lights flickering on the wall of the cave. Film is his own little underworld, a complete immersion in 
turn your damn phone off. No, the candy needs crushing. No one. Themes like Cocteau writes their themes like Cocteau. As his schemes seem to gleam in your dreams like Cocteau. For there never was a man who's as overrated. I'll say it again, he's as good with a pen as he is with a play. Or a film he'll convey with his mirrors and gloves. All the things that he loves sing his praise from Calais to Bordeaux. There's just one great auteur whose whole work is secured. And his name's C-O-C. C-O-C. C-O-C-T. C-O-C-K. Fuck it. Introducing the all-new 1946 Acura Manservant, quality you can shriek at. 